Uh, welcome to another video about um, our web application platform Reflexus Flow and its uh, underlying tool set, uh, in the Indigo as we uh, called it. Um, in this video I'd like to tell you a bit about the database utilities that we've released. Uh, these utilities actually come in, the, in two flavors, I think. Um, there's the model, there are the model related tools that deal with our data models and how to create databases from them, etc. And there's the, well, basically the other tools, the, I guess you could say the more low level kind of tools. Um, I've actually compiled a small list. Uh, here it is. Um, and well, Let's just run through them um, so, so you know uh, that they're there and how you can use them. Um, so let's start. So, so DB Schema, like, like pretty much all our utilities, if you run them just like without any command line arguments, they, they give you a, a brief explanation of the, uh, the arguments that they expect. So. In this case, um, uh, it only expects a database file name. So let's pick a database. Um, this is probably a good one. The releases database is the, uh, the database uh, underneath the portal that, that you can dow download our software from. So it's actually a database driven portal. Uh, and the releases database holds information about the releases themselves, the components that make up the release, and, and as you as you probably know, if you if you logged into the portal, there is all sorts of descriptions and explanations about uh, both components and, uh, and the releases themselves. So, um, if we run it like this. It, it basically dumps the entire schema. So there is a list of table definitions. It starts here. Uh, the component table, there's an event table, uh, a note table, and here's the release table. And apart from the table definitions, you can see that there are also definitions for indexes. Uh, last year, we also added support for, um, for views as well as triggers. Uh, but there aren't any of those in, in this database. So, so these are just the tables and the, the indexes on them. Um, and this is, this is actually the exact definition of, the, of this particular database. If you, if you want to stick it in a file, that's fine as well. You can do it like this. Um, since it's basically um, all SQL statements, we, we can just put it in here. Uh, I can type it. And there's the same definition. So um, this can be pretty useful. Uh, if you start a project, if you start building a new application, uh, well, if you do it like us, the database kind of evolves over time. And um, if you if you tend to tweak it, like, you know, add indexes to speed things up. You might after a while uh, wonder uh, what the schema actually is. So, so this is a, a good way to, um, to get to that information and, and to see how your database is actually uh, structured. Also, if you have like um, different versions of the same database, like a uh, production version, a test version, a development version, and you're not, you're not exactly sure what the differences are. Uh, this is obviously a good way to, uh, to figure that out. You, you, um, you fetch both schemas, diff the files, and you can see exactly what the difference are. differences are. And uh, to make that easier, uh, we've actually sorted the information as well. So if the differences are minor, it's not all the tables will always be uh, printed in the same order and the same holds true for indexes and stuff. So that makes it pretty convenient if you want to uh, 
see differences in different incarnations of the same database. So that's uh, that's DB schema taken care of. Um, DB run is the next utility. It's, it, it's actually well, like, like most utilities in this list, a really simple, straightforward tool. Um, you give it a file with SQL statements, uh, you give it a database, and it simply runs all these statements on the database. So, and actually, since we've just um, since we've just created this file holding uh, the schema of the releases database, uh, we can actually try and run this and and uh, and kind of recreate a a copy, an empty copy of the of the releases database. So to do that, um, first you run the utility DB run without any arguments, and you can see. Uh, the arguments that it expects. So we feed it the uh, basically we feed it the schema that we've just fetched, and let's um, let's uh, use a, a new database. So you can run statements on an existing database, or you can run the statements on a on a non-existing database and you know if that's the case it'll try to create the database and take it from there so that's what we'll do here and uh, well it's fairly uneventful but we can actually have a look um, and open it up uh, I, right now I'm opening opening it in a SQLite spy that's not one of our tools but uh, uh, nevertheless a very very useful one um, and as you can see um, here are the, the, the some of the tables that we encountered earlier so there's the releases database uh, each release holds one or more components uh, notes can be attached to releases or components and uh, and actually there's also an event table uh, where we keep track of what's happening, like um, who downloads what, etc. Um, the last four tables are actually system tables, um, but I think it's better if we discuss them in, uh, in the other uh, database tool video, um, because, because they uh, relate to uh, our data models and, and the way we use them. Um, also, as you can see, if I if I press enter here, that that the database is actually really empty. So there's no records. That's that's also what the uh, the red minus signs are about. I can uh, I can actually open the uh, the original releases database like this, and uh, that this makes it a bit easier to compare them. Uh, you can expand the uh, schema tree like this and and that way that makes it actually fairly easy to see that that the schemas uh, match up like both the tables as well as the indexes um, they match but of course the original database holds components uh, it holds notes and it holds releases so um, because it's just a schema that we r ran um, no records were copied, but we'll get to that, uh, the copying of records later on. So we've seen DB schema, we've seen DB run. A good thing to mention about DB run is uh, everything that runs actually runs inside a, a transaction. So uh, don't put any transactions inside your uh, file holding the statements. Uh, uh, DB run actually puts a transaction around all these statements and if anything goes wrong it'll just roll everything back and uh, this makes things both uh, fast but it also ensures that if anything goes wrong you don't end up with some sort of, with a database that's in a weird state um, so next tool DB version well DB version is probably the simplest tool of them all. Um, its purpose is to basically tell you 
uh, what version of SQLite is embedded uh, in our software. So you just run it and it tells you that uh, we're actually uh, up to date. 3.24 is um, last time I checked the most recent version. Um, yeah there's not much else to, t to tell about to, uh, to talk about uh, it can be um, convenient to know if you're up to date so uh, newer versions of SQLite may uh, have new features and it um, so if 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 you um, have a particular need for a particular feature this is a good way to to figure out if uh, if if that feature is present in our runtime. So uh, next utility, DB Journal. Right. So the DB Journal uh, tool can tell you the journaling mode of a database. So for instance, uh, we'll just run it and you can see that it expects uh, a database. So let's do it like this and uh, here we can see that the journaling mode of our releases database is actually the delete journaling mode. There are, there are several journaling modes. Uh, you'll have to read up on the SQLite documentation to, uh, uh, if you want to know more about them. But um, there has been some discussions or, well, not discussions, but questions on our mailing list about uh, SQLite and concurrency performance and whatnot and um, because sometimes people run into issues with uh, uh, slow queries slow operations whatever and uh, well pretty much all the issues that we've ever encountered um, uh, can be solved by setting the right journaling mode. So um, the thing to remember is whenever you create a new SQLite database, its journaling mode is, I think, this one, the delete journaling mode. But that's not the journaling mode that you should be using. Um, so if you're wondering what journaling mode to use um, and, and you don't have any particular need um, it should actually be the, the wall journaling mode. Wall stands for write ahead logging. And um, the wall journaling mode actually really helps concurrency. Uh, so if you have any trouble, any problems, wondering why uh, you're encountering database locking on multi-user systems and well, most definitely web applications on multi-user systems, make sure your database runs in wall journaling mode and the good thing is this is actually incredibly easy to do uh, so if we want to switch to our this releases database in the wall journaling mode the only thing you need to do is do this and as you can see uh, it actually tells you that the journaling mode has been switched from uh, the delete mode to the write ahead logging mode um, so again, remember that the default uh, journaling mode that SQLite uses is not the wall mode, but it's usually the, this wall journaling mode that you want to use if you're not sure about journaling mode. So keep that in mind. And uh, oh, actually, because we've just created uh, a new database, uh, we can actually see what the default journaling mode is. And as you can see, Yes, it's the delete one. So, and again, if we want to switch this one, do it like this. It takes less than five seconds and it saves you a lot of hurt and pain and problems and issues and whatnot. Uh, don't forget. So, um, the next tool we uh, should discuss is DB2CSV. Um, DB2CSV is, a, is an exporting tool. Um, so just earlier we were 
fetching a schema, running that schema to re recreate uh, an empty copy of an existing database, uh, but obviously no records were transferred. Um, DB to CSV and its companion tool, CSV to DB, uh, are, are tools that you can use to uh, save or load your uh, data to and from your table. So in this case, let's see what it expects. It actually expects the, data, uh, the, the file name of the database, a table name, and optionally uh, the file name where you want the data to go. So let's try it out again. So we'll just use the same rela releases database that we've used earlier. Um, we know, we just saw that there are releases, there are components, there are nodes. So let's just uh, dump release. Press enter and here it actually prints that, well, there are, there are only uh, four releases. I think this is the, the Flow 2017 release and the three patches that we've issued so far. Uh, but as it says where the information went, it actually, because we didn't give it a file name, uh, it figures out the file name from the table name. Uh, uh, so it's pretty much as easy as that. And if we type it, well, you can see the list uh, of the original uh, 2017 release and the three patches, including the dates that we uh, issued them. Um, and well, this makes it quite easy to uh, save any data that you've collected in your database. You basically tell it, uh, you basically tell it which tables you want to save and it takes care of the rest. So if you want to put this data in a uh, new database, obviously you can use the other tool. So CSV to DB. Um, because this loads records from a file into a table of a database. So the, the database doesn't need to exist um, and actually, let, let's create a new one. Um, so I'm telling it I want this or these records to go in a new database. So let's call it test2db. I'm not supplying any file name. Oh, well, let's, let's just call it demo. And now the four records were imported into the, uh, the demo table. So let's open this one up as well. Uh, by the way, I'm using start uh, to open the database. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a convenient way because we've associated the DB extension with the SQLite spy tool. So, so this is an easy way to, uh, to launch that, uh, to launch SQLite spy with this database. That's, that's pretty much all there is to it. And, uh, and here's the table. And there's the information. And it's really as easy as this. Um, what you do need to know is that um, CSV to DB, it, it, it's actually quite an intelligent, well, well, intelligent might not be the right word, but it's, it tries to be smart. It, it actually looks at your CSV uh, file and it figures out the separator. It actually scans uh, the, the data to figure out the, uh, the, the most likely data type. And then it creates a table uh, based on the, uh, the header information in the CSV as well as the data types that it has figured out. So, um, so as you can see here, there are several integer columns and, and a few text columns, and it, it, it just figured this out by looking at, the, at your CSV file. Um, so actually, if you have an existing database and, and uh, the demo table would have existed in that database, that table would have been dropped and, it, and this utility would have recreated a new table for this particular information. Uh, 
these two tools are are um, are not really meant to import records into an existing table, but they but just to get your data into your database and allow you to to use those records and maybe transform them, check them, whatever, but then move them to the final table that it that that the data should end up in. So that's that the, that's the way that we've designed it. Um, just so you know. Right. Um, let's close this because we're clean this up. Let's look at our list. So we've had DB schema uh, for fetching the schema. We've had DB run for running one or more statements on on an existing database or to create a new database. DB version to figure out the, the version of the, not the version of your database, but the version of the SQLite software. Huh? DB journal, that figures out the journaling mode of your database. Uh, an export and an import tool. And uh, well, we're actually nearing the end of our list. Um, DB copy and DB move are also tools to transfer records. And um, um, DB copy transfers records from one database to another. So let's see. So it's, it's a bit more involved. There is a source database, there is a target database, and you can provide it with a list of uh, table names and actually as you can see there are also um, options to just transfer the schema so basically to do what we've just manually did at the beginning or to vacuum the, the database. Vacuuming is, um, is a way of getting rid of um, unused uh, space in your database file. So if you've had uh, a database with lots and lots and lots of records and you've done lots and lots of deletes. Um, SQLite tends to not shrink your data, your file, but actually just simply mark regions in the file as unused. Uh, and vacuum is a, is a way to, well, basically clean things up. Um, in any case, um, let's give this a go. So what I could do is just say DB copy. Um, let's take the releases database again. Uh, let's create a new file again and do it like this. I want to release. I want a component and I want the note tables copied. And um, I think something will go wrong, but it's actually a good thing. Um, here you can see it has this list of, of the three tables, release, component, and node. So it actually uh, recreates those tables first and then transfers the records. Um, so and this also means that it'll override if, if the if test, if this source, uh, sorry, this target database would have contained any of these tables, these tables would have been dropped and overwritten. So, uh, so it's, it, it's actually a destructive copy. Um, and let's have a look. And there it is. And as you can see, there are three tables and there are records. And here is the table that is not copied correctly. I'll tell you about that in a second. This one is copied correctly. This one is copied correctly. And a uh, component is not copied entirely correctly because the DB copy tool doesn't support blob, uh, the blob data type. So this is uh, the contents column here is actually uh, a blob type. I'll show you here. And um, mm, DB copy doesn't support that yet. Maybe something I should do, we should be doing. Um, 
quite frankly, we actually, we actually don't use these DB copy. We don't use DB copy itself that much, uh, or DB move for that matter. But uh, because we we tend to rely on the uh, the data modeling tools, and and we use a different process, a different scheme of migrating our databases and evolving them. Um, still, this this is a good way for you to know that. Everything will be copied except blobs. Uh, again, here everything went well. Um, and that brings us to the uh, next to last utility, DB Move. DB Move is actually a, a kind of uh, successor to DB Copy. Uh, as you can see, the uh, it 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 ex it it kind of ex expects the same type of arguments. I think just the check option is different. Yes, um, but the, there is a big difference. DB copy is is very destructive, and DB move actually tries to preserve tables in your target database. So if you have an existing table and you want to move records into that existing table um, you can use db move for that it's actually um, um, even a bit smarter than uh, than that because it it tries to figure out the overlap so it the the source and the target tables might actually have Slightly different definition, so uh, but what DB Move does, it figures out the overlap in columns, and it'll it'll transfer the overlap. So it it, it actually tries to copy what it recognizes, and uh, and basically that's it. Right. So the last one is DB Call Check. I. I won't. I think I won't demo that, but it's it's good for you to know that it's there. DB call check. If you run it, um, you see that it actually expects a, a database, a table name, a column name, and a handler. So so what does it do? Um, it's actually um, a good way to try and check data that you've collected uh, over time in a particular table column. So, um, uh, as, you've, as you probably know, SQLi itself doesn't really support that many data types. There are uh, numbers like um, integers and uh, reals. Uh, there's the numeric type, obviously. There are texts. Uh, and there are, you know, uh, blobs, I think. Am I forgetting something? No, I don't think so. So th th there's a really very, very small set of data types, but, but obviously SQLite is very open to whatever you try and fit into it. Um, then again, you know, in real-world situations, you sometimes uh, need to ensure that a column holds, like, uh, for instance, timestamps or values of, of another type. And um, because SQLite is really open to whatever you put in there, um, if you... Uh, if early, if you if you're evolving your web application and have not been very strict about the data that you've stored, at some point, point uh, you might want to check what you've actually collected, and and DB call check is a is a way to to help you do that. So what it actually does is uh, you you can say oh that column of that table in that database, I want it I want all the values that are there validated by a type handler. So type handlers uh, are a topic. Uh, probably best reserved for a separate session uh, but if you know about them and if or if you if you've written type handlers and these type handlers have uh, validate or check methods 
uh, they can be used together with DB call check and they can help you figure out if there are records that uh, that hold invalid values so it can be quite quite convenient right well I think that sort of concludes uh, our list of utilities uh, there are basically two other utilities that, uh, that I wanted to mention because uh, these are um, uh, the, well, there are there are lots of SQLite utilities, but these are the two that uh, that I think you should know about because they're they're very convenient, they're very powerful, and they're easy to come by. Um, SQLite three. Well, let's let's just do a quick demo. Um, SQLite three. Uh, on my machine, I tend to rename it to just SQLite. Uh, so if you start it, um, this is how it um, begins. Uh, you can start it with uh, a database file name as well. Then it begins like this. <coughs> and um, it has a truckload of very useful commands. So for instance, I can say dot tables and it tells you, it tells us, the eight tables that are there and, and as you um, as you've probably noticed these are the four tables that we've already seen and these are the four system tables that uh, that i mentioned um, if you're wondering about the schema you can do this from here as well so here's the schema it, it uses a different ordering so that's probably one of the things that that's more convenient about our tool uh, I'm not sure but it can dump the schema uh, and there's lots of stuff you can do uh, if, you, if, you, if you're wondering about them just say dot help and there's there's a, a very useful list uh, it can actually dump tables, it can load tables, it, um, well, that, this is something that, that, that you should pretty much read up on. Uh, but before you do, I, I should probably tell you where to, uh, um, to get the tool if you don't have it yet. So. Uh, go to SQLite.org. That's uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, actual SQLite website. Uh, click download here. Oh, by the way, uh, here's the latest release of SQLite uh, of SQLite uh, 3.24. So that's the same version that uh, that we've just seen. Uh, anyways. Go click on download. Uh, scroll down there, and here is a section called precompiled binaries for Windows, and this section holds this archive, this zip archive. And it's actually the command line tool uh, here. The com they call it the command line shell program. That's the one. Uh, and as you, uh, yes, there are, uh, these days they actually package several other tools in there these might actually be very useful as well so um, very very powerful tool oh I yeah you can run statements or queries from the from here as well so yeah if I do it like this this is something that's good to know see you can do it like this or you can go like uh, let's see what's in here and very convenient and you can use the output and um, stick it in a file, stuff like that. I think with dot quit you end it. And uh, well, that's that's basically it. So that just leaves us with SQLite Spy. Here's the website. Um, I should probably show you that as well. It's open here. Junker.de. It's by a German guy uh, called Ralf Junker. Um, this is the main page of the website, but if you scroll down, um, here's the link. Uh, unfortunately, Ralph doesn't update SQLite Spy as much as he used to. Uh, not sure why, it's unfortunate, but 
luckily for us, um, he did put out a release this year. Oh yeah, actually here you can see that he did not uh, track SQLite versions uh, during the entire 2017. But uh, it's a really, really nice tool. Uh, we've been using it for many years. If you like it, consider donating. Uh, maybe he'll uh, release updates more often. Anyways, um, I think that's about it. Let's look at our list. Yes. Yeah. So, um, we'll dedicate uh, another video to the data model stuff. Uh, it's actually, I think, the, the more interesting video because, uh, um, well, the data models are quite convenient. And there's actually just, just like um, probably three utilities that you need to know. Um, but there is a lot to talk about. Uh, and uh, so, so we'll reserve that. Right, uh, if you have any questions, any remarks, um, let us know. Uh, you can tell us in the comments or better still, uh, use the mailing list uh, so everyone can see uh, your questions, your suggestions and, and we, have, can, we can have a discussion there. And uh, well... I think this is it for now, thank you for watching.